This is Michael from Science Out There. This is the fifth video in a series about Aurora photography and making time lapses. And this time I'm going to show off some advantages and differences of making time lapse videos using LR time lapse. Sometimes you might go through this entire process and find out that your video is flickery. And here's an instance of that. This is another Aurora time lapse I did. And if you look, especially in these darker areas, you see the brightness fluctuating up and down rapidly. And I'm not sure exactly what's causing it in this case. Usually it's because of the iris not collapsing down to the same position every single time the way it's supposed to. Uh, but in this case, I was at wide open and it was still doing this. So I'm not exactly sure why. But regardless, there is some software that will take care of this issue, but also give you some more advanced control over many of the things you've already seen. It'll do things like holy grail time lapses and the like. But the primary thing that I'm gonna use it for is for deflickering my Aurora time lapse footage. So I'm gonna launch a program called LR Time Lapse, and there is a free version of this, uh, but it's limited to 400 images, and you can't output to 4K, you can only do 1080p. So that might be just fine for you. Look, they even have Aurora as their startup screen, so you know they, they, they're thinking about us. <laughs> so there's an awful lot to this program and what it can do. I'm just gonna give you a really simplified version of how I use the program. I'm not gonna take you through every single step. I primarily want to focus on what's different about using LR Time Lapse compared to the method I just showed you. It's really just one use case that I use it for and I don't use it very often, so I'm not that good at it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually click on the folder that contains my 359 image sequence, which is just the first 10 seconds or so of the time lapse that you just saw. And what it's doing at this stage is understanding everything about the image sequence, when it was taken, uh, with what settings, and compares them. The first major difference is that it doesn't care if your image sequence rolls over the odometer from 9999 to 000 because it's going by the date and time that the individual items in the image sequence were taken. So it can skip over that problem, which is extremely nice. It's gonna measure the luminosity of every single image in the sequence. I am using the visual workflow and effectively you're going to run through this little map here at the top. So a couple of things that are different. Um, one is that I'm not making any changes at this stage to the images directly. I'm not doing any brightening or uh, exposure control or anything like that. Right now, it's just going through and giving me a preview luminosity. It's measuring the luminosity of each frame in the image sequence. The next stage, and I'm gonna skip keyframe wizard. I don't need that for this particular time lapse. First, we're gonna hit save to save the metadata for all of these images. This just creates XMP files. And then I need to launch Lightroom Classic, and I'm going to use this feature where I just drag my image sequence from LR time lapse to Lightroom Classic. LR stands for Lightroom in the LR time lapse name. And so that's gonna bring all of my images over into Lightroom. All right, so next I'm gonna select all the files and then I'm gonna do read metadata from files. And this will load all of the information that LR time lapse has already saved and start applying it to these images. So at this stage, I can click on one of the images, hit develop, and start making some changes. Same sort of stuff that I did on my previous sequence where I'm adjusting vibrance and saturation, a little bit of clarity and dehaze, increasing the exposure, temperature and tint over just a little bit. All right, and so I've got one image that I've been manipulating. I just picked maybe the brightest one that I see. And then I can sync all of those settings just like I did in Adobe Camera Raw to all of the other images in the sequence. And then I can go back to my library and click on my collection that I imported. Gotta go to grid view. And you can see now it's reloading all of these images with all of the changes that I made. All right, so now I'm just waiting for all of the files to get applied. All right, so now that all of my images are finished loading, I'm gonna check all, make sure everything is selected. Right click, go to metadata and save metadata to files and hit continue. So now that saves all of the changes that I just made in the develop stage to the entire image sequence. So now I'm gonna go back into LR time lapse and I'm waiting for Lightroom to finish doing what it's doing and I'm gonna hit reload. Okay, so I've hit reload and I'm gonna skip over auto transition. That's uh, for something else. And I wanna do visual previews. And so now it's gonna reload all of those images with their visual luminosity, their apparent luminosity. And you can kind of see what uh, LR time lapse is trying to accomplish here. It just looks at all the pixels in the image and decides, okay, it's this, this image was this bright, this image was this bright, and makes little decisions on whether to bump the exposure down a little bit or bump it back up just a little bit. You'll see I've got this purple line that's appearing and that's showing me all of the fluctuations that have been occurring throughout the time lapse. And in a second here, we're going to use the visual deflicker, which is gonna smooth that line right 
white out and it's going to make my images all the same smooth brightness from start to finish or at least smooth out some of those micro changes that are happening in between images. Okay, so LR time lapse has finished reloading all of the images and now I'm going to have the visual deflicker option enabled. I'm going to click that. And what I like to do is about 25 for smoothing and more accuracy and then three passes. So this will run through the images three times, try to line it up a little better, smooth everything out for me. So I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to let that run. In theory, uh, LR time lapse has visually deflickered my images and applied a bunch of data to and I can see that, uh, yeah, there is a little bit less flicker in there. So now what I need to do, uh, and I can see this at the end of my workflow, if I hover here, it'll tell me what to do next. Uh, basically I go back into Lightroom and then right click and read the metadata again. So my process was to go from camera raw to after effects to media encoder, and then I can go into Premiere. With LR time-lapse, the process is LR time-lapse, Lightroom, LR time lapse, Lightroom, back into LR time lapse, and export the video. So it's a it's a back and forth sort of situation. The next step is to hit export, and then the LR time lapse plugin will invade into Lightroom and give you some export presets. And I can do JPEG 4K, JPEG original. It is limited to um, 1080p when you come out of uh, LR time lapse if you have the free license or if you're just using it for free. I have a way around that. So I am going to output to this test slash JPEG folder and I'm going to do 4K images. I can also just do original if I want. In fact, let's do that. Let's do original and I'm gonna use JPEG as my intermediate format. And here too, you can export as HDR by choosing TIFF and 16-bit. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna do the regular JPEG and 8-bit sequence. So now we're gonna do export. And basically this is gonna do the same thing that I was doing with Adobe Camera Raw. Everything comes out as a JPEG file and then I import that into Adobe After Effects. So at this point, I just need to wait for the export to complete and I'll wait for that status bar to finish. All right, so my export is complete. And if I go back to LR time-lapse, we can see that uh, we now have a video export window but I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna hit cancel, and then I'm going to close LR Time Lapse, and I'm gonna launch After Effects. Okay, we're gonna create a new project and a new composition, and I'm gonna do a 4K compilation. You can't actually export 4K video directly from LR Time Lapse with the free license. So if I do this step and actually pop into Adobe After Effects, I can then go find my JPEG sequence. And I'm gonna select the first image in the sequence, make sure importer JPEG sequence is there. All right, real quick, change my footage interpreter to 23976, like I did before. I'm gonna drag and drop my image sequence into my timeline, move that into position, change my rendering work area, zoom out, and we'll reposition this. All right, let's set that to fit. And if we start playing back, so yeah, there you have it. I now have a way to export my video to 4K because I'm just skipping the step of using LR time-lapse to export video. I'm just doing it right from Adobe After Effects. And you'll notice immediately that uh, a lot of the flicker is gone. Uh, however, I'm gonna show you something else that's happening on this particular time-lapse. In addition to that flicker, those changes in brightness, uh, there's also a lot of extra noise in this particular image sequence, especially in the darker areas. So I'm gonna do echo again. So if you skip straight to this part, basically I'm using echo to eliminate noise by stacking multiple images one on top of the other. And the particular type of stacking algorithm that I'm gonna use is minimum. And so basically it's just borrowing images from before, stacking it on top of the current image and reducing the noise. I'm gonna decay this by 0.9. Let's do three echoes, okay? So because it's minimum, I'm gonna see my stars being diminished in brightness, uh, but I'm also seeing a reduction in noise as well. And there you go. So now, not only have we removed the flicker, we've removed all of those little noise nuances that were happening before too. And you can see it also eliminates the streaks that come from satellites flying by using the minimum feature, minimum algorithm. All right, so let's go ahead and export this bad boy. 
Okay, and we're gonna do my own 4K preset. Uh, let's see. This is just based on the high definition built-in preset. I've just changed it to 70 megabits per second instead. And we're gonna save it to our folder. We're gonna call this one Arch, because my Aurora looks a bit like an arch, and export that. So to review, what we've done is used LR time lapse to deflicker the image. We modified our image sequence in Lightroom, exported all the files as JPEGs, and then imported that JPEG sequence into Adobe After Effects, and then we're exporting to our final video output. All right, let's see how we did, and that's looking pretty good. All the flicker is gone. In fact, uh, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the undoctored version that's right out of Camera Raw uh, and the version that uh, was done with LR time-lapse, and uh, you can see the difference.